Come and listen to my story about a man named Chad. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Come along and visit with the Clampett family As they take you to their mansion in the hills of Beverly And when they do, you'll run into a friend of theirs you've met That good old friend with filter blend, Winston Cigarette Winston tastes good like a cigarette should tangled up in the rope. <laughs> well, I am rather helpless. If a man were to try and kiss me now, I couldn't resist. You could? No, I'd, I'd be at his mercy. Well, don't worry about that. Ain't no man gonna kiss you while I'm here. <laughs> Just so. You are like a magnificent skyscraper with an uncompleted penthouse. Thank you. Oh, that reminds me, Dr. Twomley is most anxious to see you again. Oh, I'm anxious to see him, too. He never did give me my certificate of health for school. Well, Dr. Tromley is not an internist or diagnostician. He works in the field of psychiatry. Well, as soon as he gets done working in that field and gets back to his office, I sure would like to see him. Well, let's see his office now, but what I want to explain is... I better hustle down there right now. Miss Potts says without I have a doctor's certificate, I can't graduate into the sixth grade. <laughs> Morning, Miss Hathaway. Where's Jethro? I told him to string me a clothesline in here. I'm gonna have to take a hickory switch to that boy again. He's gone, Granny, but you don't need a clothesline. I sure do. Can't hang him outside. It's gonna rain today. <laughs> but, Granny, you have an automatic clothes dryer that... rain today. That's right. Well, I just read the weather forecast in the morning paper, and it says fair. Yeah, it's gonna be a pretty fair rain. <laughs> Granny, the Government Weather Bureau says no rain today. Is that a fact? Granny? Oh, howdy there, Miss Hathaway. Howdy. Granny, your soap's hardening up real good. I best go out and start cutting it into cakes. It's gonna rain today. <laughs> Miss Clapper, perhaps you can ease Granny's mind about this rain. Oh, that don't vex Granny none. She likes rain. Besides, it don't rain enough out here. <laughs> it's not going to rain today. Who says it ain't? Well, the U.S. Weather Bureau. Who's he? <laughs> if I had to narrow it down to one he, I guess I would have to say chief meteorologist. Yeah, them Indians is pretty good at reading rain signs, but I'll go along with Granny. Uh, the United States Weather Bureau does not depend upon rain signs. It is a vast complex of highly skilled meteorologists working with the latest scientific equipment. They send balloons tens of thousands of feet into the air to measure wind velocity, barometric pressure, moisture content, and temperature. Their radar network scans the weather all over the continent. Their weather satellites are out in space, circling the globe. Now, now what does Granny have to compare with this in making a weather forecast? Twinges. <laughs> and little stabbing beans in her bones. I know what twinges are, but they can hardly be considered dependable weather prophets. Oh, I reckon they're as good as balloons. <laughs> Granny's got other ways of telling when rain's on the way. She studies ants and spiders and listens to the way the owl hoots and other things. I'm afraid superstitions and omens cannot compete with knowledge and experience. Well, I'm glad you're coming around to our way of thinking. <laughs> Wait, yes, sir. Granny's gonna want him to tote that soap in before it rains. He's gone to Dr. Trombley's office. Good. He's gonna need that health certificate at school. <laughs> to have it before I can graduate to fifth grade. You're in the fifth grade? Yes, sir. Fixing to scoot right on up into the sixth, quick as you can give me my certificate of help. <laughs> Jethro, a simple physical examination is no problem. I want to explore your mental capacity. 
your cerebral region. Should I take off my shirt? No. <laughs> that won't be necessary. Just make yourself comfortable on the couch over there. Well, what did you do to your thumb? Oh, uh, I have a patient who thinks he's a dog. <laughs> I hope this examination won't take too long. I got to get to school before it rains. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Jethro. It isn't going to rain. Oh, yes, it is. Granny says so. When Granny says something's going to happen, it happens. Sounds like she has remarkable powers. Strongest little woman you ever did see. <laughs> I meant clairvoyant powers. Uh, would you say she's a medium? No, sir, I'd say she's a small. <laughs> she's strong as a medium. And if she ever took a switch to you, you'd know it. Has she ever taken a switch to you? Well, she sure has. Woo. And you stood for it? Last time, stood for pretty near two days. <laughs> Sounds like your grandmother is rather savage. Sometimes she's as ornery as a mud wasp in a dry gourd. Violent temper. I'll say. You're afraid of her. Oh, yes, sir. She's vicious? Well, that's a fact. Mean? Darn tootin'. Cruel? Oh, yes, sir. You hate her. Granny? Why, she's the sweetest little woman that ever lived. <laughs> but you said she whips you. Well, she sure does. How often? Just as often as an it. <laughs> Jethro, you're quite a remarkable boy. Oh, is the examination over? No, 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 no just fine. Now, you say you don't hate your grandmother. But how do you feel about your Uncle Jed? Is he a strict disciplinarian? Uncle Jed says that's nobody's business. What? He says it don't matter what church you go to, just so long as you go. <laughs> My question wasn't about religion. Well, if you ever get one, you just ask Uncle Jed, because he can quote the good book from cover to cover. <laughs> that's wonderful. So you like your Uncle Jed? Oh, yes, sir. Well, back home, I used to brag that Uncle Jed could outshoot, outlift, outhunt, outfight, and outfigure any man in them there hills. I see. Back home, you were proud of him, hmm? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, but now that you're in Beverly Hills, surrounded by well-educated, well-dressed, sophisticated, important, and successful men, you still brag about him? No, sir, I don't. Uh-huh. Why not? Uncle Jed says it's sinful to shame these puny little city fellers. <laughs> Kent Harding, Miss Hathaway. Hello, Mrs. Bodine. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. I just put the last stitch in Ellie Mae's brand new dress, and I'd like for you to see it. Oh, I'd love to. Uh, Ellie Mae, come on down. My dog is when it comes to fancy sewing and dressmaking. Ain't nobody sits higher on the stump than my cousin Pearl. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, no, but it embarrasses oh. me. <laughs> kind of busy, isn't it? in Beverly Hills ain't never seen a dress like that. You have my word on it. <laughs> it ain't so much. Ain't she says, look at her, grinning like a butcher's dog. <laughs> you, you mean you, you, you did this all yourself? <laughs> Every puff, ruffle, gusset, gore, and eyelet. <laughs> Let's go show it to Granny Jethro. Oh, Mrs. Bodine, uh, Jethro is in Dr. Fomley's office. Oh. Miss Hathaway, how well do you know that there, Dr. Twombly? Well, I'm not a patient of his, but he has a very big reputation. I think I know how he got it. <laughs> what do you mean? I wasn't in his office for two minutes, and he tried to lure me to his couch. <laughs> well, he does that with everybody. He's a psychiatrist. Yeah, he admitted that to me, and I told him he ought to try to get himself cured. <laughs> Psychiatry is what he practices. Well, he ain't going to practice on Pearl. <laughs> now then, Jethro. As I've already explained, sometimes we have hostilities and aggressions which are so deeply hidden from our conscious mind that they reveal themselves only in our dreams. 
Now, please, try again to recall for me a few of your dreams. <laughs> Jethro. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me about your dreams. You keep asking me about my dreams, but you won't let me sleep long enough to have one. <laughs> Let's forget about the dreams and go back to your conscious relationship with your family. Now, we've established that you love your mother, adore your grandmother, and worship your Uncle Jed. Uh, how do you feel about your cousin, Ellie Mae? Dr. Twombly, that is times when I'd like to whoop the tar out of that girl. Uh -huh. And just when is that? When she whoops the tar out of me. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she's all the time wrestling me down, getting a toehold or an arm lock on me. I'm that smart. <laughs> you mean to tell me that that beautiful and fragile looking girl can engage you in combat and emerge victorious? Uh, no, sir. But she can whoop the tar out of me wrestling. <laughs> And that makes you angry? You bet. You want revenge? Yes, sir. She disgraces you? Yes, sir. Shames you? Yes, sir. And you hate her? Ellie Mae? Well, shucks, no. I'd cut off my right arm for her. <laughs> Jethro, don't you hate anybody? <laughs> well, I'm commencing to get a mite put out with you for not giving me my certificate of health. <laughs> All right, Jethro. You take this note to Dr. Wilson across the hall, and he'll give you your certificate for school. Thank you. <laughs> oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Well, Jethro, hello. You going in to see Dr. Twombly? Briefly, yes. Do you hate your mother? No. Well, don't tell the doctor. Seems to disappoint him something awful. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jean. Oh, Milburn. Oh, biting nails again? <laughs> uh, your wife was scheduled for this hour. Yes, I know. She just called me from the beauty parlor. She's running a little late there and felt she needed that more than this. And uh, I have to agree. <laughs> Your wife's doing fine. She's greatly improved. Oh, really? You know, it's hard to believe that once she was worse than she is now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm greatly indebted to both of you for putting me in contact with that wonderful Clampett family. Fascinating, aren't they? Remarkable. Jethro is the most uncomplicated teenager I've ever met. Well, the whole family's uncomplicated. Happy as hogs in a mud water. <laughs> <laughs> you are close to them. I'm proud of them. You're just the man to get me back in their good graces. Oh, well, happened? Jethro's mother misunderstood my invitation to the couch. <laughs> I'm persona non grata up there. You just come with me. I can fix that. Wonderful. I'm especially anxious to question Granny. That little woman is a walking encyclopedia of mountain medicine, superstition, and phenomena. She absolutely fascinates me. Hi, <laughs> dingy Ellie Mae. You're prettier than a red-winged blackbird sitting on a yellow pumpkin. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. But it's ain't Pearl Jeff that does it. Is this all handwork lace, Pearl? Every stitch of lace, braid, ribbon, and bow. I put a lot into that dress. Ellie Mae puts considerable into it herself. <laughs> Ellie Mae? Miss Jean here has got a right dandy idea. She wants to take you out shopping for some other dresses. What? You get your hackles up, Pearl. I reckon she wants to save this one for best. Exactly. A dress like this should... Should not be worn too often. <laughs> Wouldn't be a chore to wash and iron it. That's the truth. Well, now, run along, girls, but be back before three. Well, do we have to, Paul? Well, you don't want to get caught out in the rain in that dress. That's when you said it was uh, going to come down, wasn't it, Granny? It's going to start to shower at three o'clock. Granny, it is... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, maybe I ought to ride into town with them and stop off at Dr. Twomley's office. See what's happened with Jethro. Pearl, 
Don't throw yourself at that goomer doctor. Oh, he ain't no goomer doctor. Well, he ain't a regular doctor. I asked him, I says, how do you cure warts? And he commences giving me a lot of talk about a electric needle. <laughs> right quick, I says, how are you going to thread it? With baling wire? <laughs> he had no answer for that one. Uh, maybe he ain't just the best doctor that ever come along, but I kind of like him. Well, I still say don't throw yourself at him, Pearl. If you want to see him, I'll conjure him over here. Yeah. My love charm. I got him all wonked up. All it needs is a little starting powder and you to say the magic words. Granny, I don't hold with conjures and love charms. Pearl, with your boy in a Beverly Hill school, why do you want to stay so ignorant? Why do you use this kind of stuff in Beverly Hill? <sighs> That's why it's so powerful out here. They don't know how to fight it. <laughs> Open the pouch, you might. And I'll sift in a little starting powder, and then you hold it to your heart, and you say the magic words. <laughs> Granny, I don't know how to do it. I'll show you. Now you watch. Darling, darling, my true love, come a-swoopin' like a dove. Oh, Granny! Granny! There's somebody here to see you. Granny, I couldn't wait to see you again. Wait, Carlos and Max, I conjured him for myself. Get away from me, it's Pearl you want, not me. Toads and buzzards, bats so mean, switch the spell to Pearl Bodine. Stay away from me. You'll hear what I mean. You'll stay away from me. Mr. Clavett, you don't understand. Now, I, now, I just, just calm down, Dr. Palmy. Go over here and sit on the sofa while you get a grip on yourself. Well, I'll be getting back to the bank, Gene. I see you're in good hands. No, Milburn, wait. <laughs> but, what, what, what's going on? Explain it to me. He explain the behavior of these uncomplicated people to Beverly Hills' leading psychiatrist? <laughs> no, Milburn, wait. <laughs> Sorry. I want to pick up my wife at the beauty shop before the rain. <laughs> rain? What rain? The forecast says clear. You learn. So long, scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I am perfectly all right. All I want to do is see Granny. I know that, but you gotta control the urge so she can break the spell. <laughs> what spell? The one she threw it on you by accident. I'd like to talk to her about it. <laughs> you would, but just simmer down a little first. <laughs> I told you that love charm would work twice as powerful on these Beverly Hills men. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I tried to switch it over to you, but it had too strong a hold on it. I'll have to break the spell now with my let and go powder, and then start all over for you. Now, understand me, I don't blame you for the way you feel. Ain't no finer women growed in the whole world than in the hills back home. Now, you take my cousin, Pearl. <laughs> White as snow, make the spell of love, let go! Spell is broke, Jed, you can let him go now. Oh, Granny, uh, wait, what, what, what did you do to me? Come back, I want to talk to you. Granny, please. Granny, looks like the spell ain't broken. Never seen a man held so tight in the grip of love. You gotta remember, this fella is a psychiatrist to start with. <laughs> Now, stay right where you are, Doctor. I'll bring Granny in to see you just like I promised and Pearl, too. Gee, how do I look? Fetching as a fat hog on market day. Let's go see how Granny do. Granny? <laughs> Doggy, you scare away vultures. I do appreciate this, Granny. Me, too. Come on. I'm glad to get shit of the rascal. Why, they must be 30, 40 years difference in our ages. <laughs> At least. I'm not about to get mixed up in one of them May and December courtships. <laughs> Here they are. Oh. Bonjour, Monsieur Doctor. <laughs> 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 I never see a spell to beat this one. <laughs> I got a 
I've settled down. I think I found his weak spot, Pearl. What's that? He's mighty fine of music. Come on in, yodel for him. Jed, I just can't bust out yodeling for no reason. Well, don't worry. I'll lead you into it real natural. Well, I just hope it helps to get his mind off Granny. Me too, Pearl. I'm getting awful tired of that young fella chasing me. Why, there must be 20 years difference in our ages. <laughs> At least. <laughs> By dingy's daisy, it was your love charm that got him started. <laughs> but maybe it's your own charm that keeps him going. <laughs> See, Dr. Twombly, did I ever tell you about my cousin Pearl here being an extra fine cook and housekeeper? Yes, you did. Did I tell you about her dressmaking? Yes. Sock darning and shirt mending? Yes. Well, uh, speaking of yodeling. At least, Pearl. Oh, let it 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 So that's how come you so fancy dressed up and smelling with vanilla extract. Of course not. Well, he's right taken with you, Granny. He's been asking me a lot of questions about you. Don't be silly. Why, there's at least five or ten years difference in our age. How many? Don't oh, truck away. It's going to start to rain. But, Granny, the paper says that... Scoop when I tell you. <laughs> I hear Jeff. Oh, here you are, Granny. Thank goodness. At last, maybe we can be alone together for a little while. I've got so much to talk to you about. Before we begin, I want to remind you that I ain't no spring chicken. I couldn't care less. I'm glad you're the age you are. Well, you ain't exactly just hatched out of the egg yourself. <laughs> so much the better. Gives us more in common. Well, as long as you got your eyes wide open, let's go into the parlor. No, no wait. I I've got a better idea. We'll only be interrupted in there. My car's out front. We'll go for a drive. We can talk much better that way. Is that your car out front with no top on it? Yes, I always take the top off this time of the year. But we can't go driving because it's going to start to rain. No, it isn't. No, I say it is. But I heard the news on the way over. The weather forecast is for clear skies. What time is it? A little before three. It's going to start to shower any minute. No, it isn't. No, I say it is. What makes you think so? I've been reading the signs. What signs? The way the ants is banking the dirt up in front of their holes, and the owl is hooting close to the house during the day. Fascinating. Come on. You can tell me all about it while we drive around. I told you I ain't going driving in the rain. But, Granny, it isn't going to rain. You are the muliest goomer of a doctor I ever did see. Come on. Come on, Granny. Help us coming. See? I knew this would happen if we stayed here. Leave him be, Jed. We's old enough to know what we's doing. Besides, he's got to get his car under cover before the rain hits. It isn't going to rain. Now, look. Let me show you. Look! Did you ever see such a clear blue sky, such a... What's that black thing? <laughs> That's a rain cloud. My doggies, Granny, you hit it right on the nose. Oh, my car! <laughs> Poor fellow's gonna get soaked, but I reckon a cold shower won't hurt him none. Might even broke the love spell you threw it on him, Granny. Oh, I don't care about that no more. Things wouldn't have worked out between him and me no way. Well, what do you mean? He's too old and set in his ways. <laughs> Oh, 
Ooh. What in tarnation? It's a clothesline for Granny. I thought Miss Jean showed her how to use automatic dryer. She did, Uncle Jeff, but Granny says old ways is best. That's for sure. Now get it going, Jethro. And quick as you finish there, Jethro, I want you to help me plant some tobacco so I can make my own Winston cigarettes. <laughs> Are you going to try to make Winston's? I reckon I'll have to call them clampets, but they'll be... You can't make cigarettes as good as Winston. Nobody can. Why not? Well, you said yourself, old ways is the best. Well, I can hang my tobacco leaves right on these lines, secure. Jethro, take these ropes down before your uncle makes a darn fool out of himself. <laughs> Jeff, you can't grow and cure tobacco as good as they put in these here Winstons. Here. Light up. Refresh <laughs> your memory of how a Winston tastes. You're right, Granny. Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette hat on it. <laughs> the Beverly Hillbillies has been presented by Winston. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we hope you will try Winston. Because Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. You all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.